So. The next vice president of the United States, Paul Ryan, who is an incredible individual, incredible colleague. I joined Mitt Romney's ticket. Let me tell you a little bit of, about the man, Mitt Romney. And let me tell you about his beliefs and his feelings about what is the federal government's first and primary responsibility, and that is to provide for the common defense of our nation. We don't forget that. I've had so many conversations with Mitt, I can't count, count, add them all up. He's extremely committed to making sure that our American military is the best in the world, bar none, nothing comes close. We believe in the doctrine of peace through strength. Strength means have a strong national defense. And that is why we are steadfastly opposed to the president's reckless and devastating defense cuts. Now let me walk through kind of what's happened lately. We start off by not supporting the president's defense cuts that he already placed in his budget. We think that cuts beyond the bone. Now, it, it's obvious that savings can be had, that waste can be gotten, and more efficiencies can be held. But we think what he put out on his budget goes far beyond that and puts our men and women in jeopardy and reduces the quality and the strength of our primary mission, our national defense. Now, that brings us to the issue, and everybody here knows what a sequester is now. It used to be an arcane budget term. When those budget negotiations were going on, it was the president and his party leaders that insisted on this makeup, this formula. Defense spending is not half of all federal spending, but it's half of the cuts approximately in the sequester. We disagreed with that then, we disagree with it now. So what have we done about it? What has Mitt Romney proposed to do about it? The House has already acted to prevent it from happening. That's what a lot of people don't realize. As the House said, number one, we don't agree with the president's reckless defense cuts to begin with, that he started with. Number two, Renee and I have already passed legislation cutting government spending in other areas of government to replace and prevent this reckless defense cut from occurring in January in the first place. That bill passed in the spring in the House. I authored it and brought it to the floor and passed it. What happened after that? The Senate has done nothing. The president has proposed no solution to this. I remember hauling up the president's budget director. Buck McKean at Armed Services did the same thing. We asked them, if you're not going to propose a solution to this problem like we have done, what is your solution? We've heard nothing yet. And so the House has already passed, as well as the Senate, which has now been finally signed into law, bipartisan legislation saying, put up or shut up. The president needs to show us how he plans on putting this in place if he is not going to help us pass legislation preventing it in the first place. So we're now waiting for that answer. The point is this. Under a Mitt Romney administration, this will not happen. We will reverse these reckless, devastating defense cuts that the president is bringing us toward. We will recognize that the primary responsibility of the federal government, first and foremost, is a strong national defense. That is something Mitt Romney is extraordinarily committed to do. He's been talking about this for years because we believe that our men and women in our military, our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, our Marines, must have the best equipment, must have the continuity of life of the benefits that are promised to them, must have the security of knowing that the promises made to them are the promises that will be kept, and must have everything at their backs to make sure that when they're given a mission that their government, that the Pentagon, that their Congress, that their president has their backs. We think that's essential. I've, I carried this card in my pocket. I've carried it with me for years. I don't really talk about it too often. It's, it's the men and women who've lost their lives, the men who've lost their lives in the district I represent in Wisconsin. Talk to these families, been to the funerals. It, it's the ultimate sacrifice. Our founders gave us an incredible country, which is a unique country, because it's a country founded on an idea. 
that our rights come from nature and God, not from government, and that we are all free people. The only way we maintain this exceptional nation, this American idea, is because our veterans have time and again, generation after generation, secured it for us. That's what's so exceptional and special about America. And so it's our duty to preserve this legacy, to support our voluntary force of men and women who volunteer to serve our nation and not let them be pawns in a political game because this is messing with jobs and lives. Right here in North Carolina, it's a, it could cost us 55,000 jobs. The president's demanding a massive tax increase on small businesses, which will cost us jobs if, in exchange for these defense sequesters. We don't want to trade small business jobs for military jobs. We want more jobs across the board. And so what we are saying through our actions, what we've done already in Congress, what Mitt Romney is already proposing, is we're not going to play political pawns with our military. We're going to embrace peace through strength. We're going to have a budget that respects the mission that we're giving our military so they have a world-class Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, the best technology, the best benefits, and a national military that is unrivaled in the world because that is how we extend peace and prosperity for not only our generation but the next generation. Well, at this point, um, I think my colleague is going to make a few more comments, and then I think if there are any questions, um, maybe we can take a few of those as well. Yeah. Um, Stacy and Christina, you know, words, there aren't any. Um, we just say thank you for your strength, and our prayers are with you. Um, when we think about this issue, our national defense, it's not just some theoretical thing, which is we want a strong national defense. It's personal to so many people. Uh, my childhood friend was a brigade commander here at the 82nd. Uh, he was in Diala province in, during the surge. He most recently was a brigade commander of the 1st uh, Brigade of the 101st uh, in Afghanistan. Um, he and I are very close friends, and he would email me um, what was happening, the kind of sacrifices, um, and the morale changes that occur when these kinds of looming defense cuts occur. I was in Helmand uh, in December with our Marines. Uh, you know, Leatherneck, which is a big base, we'd go out to the various different fobs up in the north. It's incredible to see what they've done. Helmand a few years ago was an ugly area. The poppy crop, the, you guys know the story. Um, but what our Marines have done there to pacify this area, to get security under control, to deal with the poppy crop. I was in the Argandab Valley in Kandahar with the 82nd uh, before the Afghan surge a few years ago. I remember talking to a young private uh, from the Menominee Indian Tribe Reservation, which is in Wisconsin, um, about his future, about how he was excited to serve his country, about the future he wanted in the military because he got such great satisfaction out of it. Only in America do you have young people like this who are inspired by the ideals of our country, and who have this pathway, in this case, a pathway out of poverty and into a life of self-discipline, of self-sufficiency, of pride. It's amazing what this does for our culture, not to mention our strength as a country. And so these issues are personal issues to each American because they're touched in some way or another. And that is why we believe in acting to prevent these things from happening. Specifically, we, Renee and I, passed legislation cutting $318 billion over 10 years to stop that 50. They don't like it, what's the solution? Uh, we don't want to cost jobs. And so, whatever happens between now and November will happen between now and November, but what Mitt Romney is committed to doing is making sure this doesn't take place. And that means if we have to do it in January, we'll do it in January. And that's, that's, that's our position. We're crystal clear about it because it's not just policy, it's, it's personal. And it's important that we send the right signals to our military families, to our economy, and to our adversaries. We are going to be strong. We're not going to back down. 
Don't question our resolve.